90 through 81. Let's get on with these quickly because I don't have time for this bullshit. And I gotta get to bed, so, so sorry, this will be another bad video, but whatever. Coming in at number 90 is Michael Bennett, defensive end for the Seattle Seahawks. Now I keep forgetting to mention this guy in previous video and constant, constantly. And I do fault myself for that because, but, but he, and he is one of the unsung heroes uh, for the Seattle Seahawks because everybody's focused on the Legion of Boom. <laughs> and the first, and the first set, and the first, uh, and the first segment of uh, Michael Bennett ends up being, uh, being uh, when he when he had that bike ride around uh, CenturyLink Field after the Seahawks won the championship against the Packers. <laughs> I'm sorry, I laugh at that every single time. A very underrated player. This guy should be top fifty. Uh, he's a damn good. He's a damn good defensive end, and the reason why. And the reason why this, and one of the reasons why the Seattle Seahawks defense is what it is. Uh, number eighty nine is Greg Olson. About freaking time, Greg Olson makes the, the countdown. I think he made it in the past. I'm not sure. Don't know. Don't care. Because he was he was the most consistent target for the Carolina Panthers last year. Although I do like Kelvin Benjamin. And I believe this. I believe the Panthers drafted another wide receiver in the first round of this year's draft. Should be an interesting offense. Should be an interesting offense for the Carolina Panthers in 2015. Um, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Apparently, Greg Olson's numbers have gone up each and every year. Um, expect this year. Expect his numbers go, to go down this year. But he's been a damn good tight end since he came into the league in 2007. <laughs> Glover Quinn of the Detroit Lions comes in at number 88, led the NFL in interceptions. Should be. I think he's fine right where he's at right now. We'll wait and see what he does without the services of Adon Kutsu. They do have uh, Haloti Nada. More on that in a second. But uh, not the same Not the same thing, because I still think the Lions are going for a 3 4. Because uh, I do believe the Lions are not going to a. 3-4 defense. They're, they're still going to do 4-3. So let's see how Haloti does with that. But whatever. And therefore, let's see how Glover Quinn does. But hey, hell of a fucking safety. Yeah. He does his job better than, than most of safeties, obviously. And, come, and coming in at number 87 is Demarcus Ware, who dropped once again. And I have no problem with this because he is getting... Because let's be realistic, people. He's getting old. But this year, he's got Wade Phillips, and Wade Phillips is going to use the 3-4 scheme. So he's back at outside linebacker. So I expect him to do so I expect him to do pretty good in 2015, too. But yeah, but yeah, yeah I'm fine with DeMarcus Ware being a, a, at number 87. <laughs> um, Eric Royal comes in at number 86. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's been yeah, he's been yeah, he's been getting better every year, <laughs> and his beard has been getting better every year too. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's all but yeah, all over the goddamn field, God, he's a night, he's a night, he's a freaking nightmare. <laughs> Another safety. Uh, Eighty-five, Golden Tate. What a fucking man! What a fucking year Golden Tate had. And what a difference maker he he was for the Detroit Lions in 2014, especially when Calvin Johnson was not in the lineup. Uh, Calvin Johnson, Golden Tate, really good wide receiver tan tandem. Oh yeah, plus they got and plus the Lions have a few good good tight ends as well, and they like to throw the football a lot. Oh yeah, and I mean a lot. That's part of the reason why Golden Tate's numbers are have been up. Now, because Calvin Johnson did miss a few games, expect him to drop out of the top 10, maybe 
maybe out of the top 25, just, just be prepared for, for it when it happens. Uh, 84 is Terrell Suggs. He had one of his better seasons, and yet he drops from the countdown. Probably a projection of 2014, or for 2015, excuse me. They did show they did show a few highlight plays of uh, 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 one in particular when the Ravens were facing the Jacksonville Jaguars in particular, and this uh, poor little running back who sucks obviously because he plays for Jacksonville <laughs> uh, couldn't even couldn't even couldn't couldn't even try to couldn't even try to block him, and then, and then he ends up getting Blake Bortles. And <laughs> oh man. I get, you know, whatever. It's fucking Jacksonville. Of course, of course, of course, anyone could get past it. Past anybody in Jacksonville. I mean, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, Jacksonville's a joke, but. Uh, Terrell Suggs should have dropped, but not that much. C come on now. <laughs> I don't know if he. I don't know how, man. <laughs> Give me a break. Um, fine, whatever. Uh. Coming in at, at number 83 is Marquise Pouncey, the only, I believe the only center in this year's countdown as well. Again, whatever. Though I can understand that, not many, and it's typical, not many offensive linemen, especially centers, uh, typically, it typically happens is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it's about time Marquis Capouncey got in the countdown because he, because it went proven when, when he is healthy. I don't think he's made the countdown yet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but when he is healthy, he can, he is one of the best centers in the game. <laughs> he really is big difference maker on that Steelers offensive line. I don't approve. I do not approve of his uh of his uh, Aaron Hernandez supporting bullshit, but. I'll let that bullshit slide. Alright, coming in at drop, and coming in at number 82 is Haloti Nata. Former member of the Baltimore Ravens, now a member of the of the of the of the Detroit Lions. Again, like I mentioned earlier, he's been playing great, great under Baltimore's 3-4 defense, but now he's under but now he has a new but now he's in a new system, and unless the lines are switch, unless the lines are switching to a three-four defense, like I said, I don't know how effective he will be. So yeah, this is a, a, once again a projection for 2015. <sighs> I guess that whatever. Oh, and speaking of which, I forgot to bring this up because because we're because I remember when Terrell Suggs made that awesome. Uh, a late catch from uh, from Roethlisberger in that uh, AFC wildcard game at Heinz Field. Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, John Harbaugh was uh, was called that play the greatest catch in the history of the NFL. Uh, and I'm not good, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a bad, it, it, it was a pretty damn good catch. Because he caught it between his legs. So yeah. Any higher and he would have been talking like Mickey Mouse if he didn't have a, if he didn't wear a cup. But but holy smoke, I've seen better I've seen better hand catches. I've seen a lot better catches than, than <laughs> this past year alone than just the, than the, the, the Terrell Suggs catch. So let's slow the fuck down there on the greatest catch in the history of the NFL. <laughs> Although I can't, in the back, in the backstage, in the back uh, stage segment, <laughs> in the locker room, happened was pretty fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, and last, and last but not least, Darren Sproles, running back of the Philadelphia Eagles, and he, and and is now going to be part of that. Uh, running back rotation with DeMarco Murray and uh, Ryan Matthews. Um, Sproles, is, Sproles still has the speed. Let's call it what it is. He's still 
got the speed. So obviously he can play for a few more years. But let's call it what it is. He's a situational running back. All right, he's a he's a good running back. He's a damn. You know, he's a he, he he's a freaking nightmare for opponents because of his speed and quickness. And oh my god, and in special teams, get the fuck out of here. And and Chip Kelly really prides on special teams. I mean, I gotta give I gotta give the devil his due there. <laughs> You know, so I wanted to go. So yeah, uh, so that's so that's it for a one to age two. So, and sorry, my last video was a little fucking uh, rusty. This video is rusty as well. But I just gotta get this up, and I, and I gotta get back into the groove. So uh, let me. So let me make a bold predict. So let me make a prediction right now. I, I, on who I believe is going to be number one in this year's countdown, because uh, since the, since the shit started in 2011, the reigning NFL's most valuable player has gotten the top spot. 2011 it was Tom Brady. 2012 it was Aaron Rodgers. 2013 Adrian Peterson. Last year was Peyton Manning. But this year, I believe Aaron Rodgers will not get the top get the top spot in this year's countdown. Nothing against Aaron Rodgers. I do believe he should. I do believe he should still be the top quarterback in this year's countdown. Just not the top player. I believe that this year it's going to be J.J. Watt. Because let me tell you something. Had J. Had the Houston Texans made the playoffs in 2014, J.J. Watt. Would, would have been the NFL's most valuable player. You, you can't freaking deny it. Yeah, just look just look at how he just look at how JJ Watt played last year. Holy shit. The guy was all over the field. End of fucking story. But anyway, that's just my opinion. That's just my prediction. And and that is it for my reaction to the to so 90 through 80, yeah, 90 through 81. Later, fuckers.